Listen up, everyone. They've announced that the technical regulations are changing for next season. Now, there's a risk a lot of our hard work could be undone if we're not careful. So let's figure out how to mitigate this. Drivers, take a look at the developments we have and let us know what you want to invest in protecting. All right, everyone, let's get on top of this. OK, we had the new parts come through from the factory. We'll get them on the car ahead of FP1. Hey, what's up, guys? Ara here, and welcome back to the episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 80 today for the Japanese Grand Prix in season four. If you guys did miss the previous episode, then then be sure to go check that out before you see this one. But head into this episode, then, as you can clearly hear and see at the start of that video, we've got a rule regulation change, but not a major one, really. It's the similar one we had from seasons one to two in this career mode, where the durability is going to change. Remember last year, going into season four, this very season, the aerodynamics and the chassis both changed. The reliability and engine did not. And so for this year into season five, the only thing that will change is reliability. Now, that may not sound like a lot. Obviously, we keep our upgrades. Everyone keeps their upgrades. But for us, reliability and durability has... Well, durability has been an issue. Reliability, not so much, actually. Ironically, even though our parts are wearing out quite a lot, actually, probably the most they ever have in career mode so far, we've not actually had a DNF, I want to say, I think. I might just be jinxing myself right now, but I don't think we've had a DNF for the team. You know, Raikkonen hasn't had an engine failure or mechanical failure that I can remember of. If you can, then put that in the comments below, but I might be forgetting it. But um, in terms of that, we've been pretty okay, but durability-wise, the internal combustion engine has been wearing out so, so much. Probably a, a cause of the fact that we don't actually have any upgrades on that, but the other parts haven't been, uh, haven't been uh, wearing too much, and that's because, you know, Ferrari, as an AI team, did a lot of work before I got here to do those upgrades. So I'm I'm going to actually spend a fair bit of time and money uh, and our uh, resource points rather to kind of spend and adapt these uh, reliability parts basically for next year because I think they'll come in handy. Of course, that does mean we're going to compromise a little bit, maybe upgrading, but at the moment our car is in a good stead. Obviously, now going into this Grand Prix, we've got an ultimate weight reduction upgrade that we fixed from last episode. It failed on the car last episode, and so we got it now for the Japanese Grand Prix. You can see uh, both uh, us here at Ferrari, McLaren and Renault, all of us with the ultimate upgrade clear because they've got the exact same trajectory as I do. So I'm assuming both of them have one ultimate upgrade coming into this race. And so that means McLaren now streak ahead of Red Bull Racing as the second best car on the grid. Very strange because McLaren really have not been consistent and up here at all in this championship. It's been Renault and kind of almost Toro Rosso Mercedes kind of being there in the top 10. I've hardly really seen McLaren ever since Bahrain Grand Prix uh, in the top 10 very, uh, very much. So I haven't really raced them that much after the kind of first five episodes with Alonso kind of doing some battling with him so we'll see how that goes here at Japan uh, and we'll see how Red Bull fare now being the third best team and Renault pretty much are a pixel away from overtaking Red Bull so going into season five with no resets here season five is going to be very intriguing because you're going to have four teams here so close together you've got Toro Rosso and Haas catching back up to Mercedes Sauber getting away from Force India but Force India might be saving points for next year it's all up in the air really because you can't really tell with resets you can kind of maybe guess who's going to go down in a way, but because it's not resetting, it gives a lot of people chances to upgrade heavily over the winter from Abu Dhabi to Australia, so that will be the really interesting thing for us, but we are going to save some uh, reliability parts right now, and we'll save some more as we get those resource points, but uh, we might have to play a bit carefully, because I might want to still do one or two small upgrades before the end of the season, uh, depending on how the other teams are catching up, and if the championship is a bit too close uh, for my liking, basically, but we're going to move on then into qualifying on Saturday here around Suzuki. At the moment, as the sun creeps down in Suzuka, all sunny, uh, but it's actually going to be starting to rain maybe towards the end of the qualifying day, so we're going to have to watch out for that in Q3. But first of all, we have to actually get into said Q3. Raikkonen at the uh, top of the time she's right now in Q1. The car feeling pretty good around Suzuka. I've got to say, they're losing a lot of time in spoon, uh, the spoon curves. You can see on the left hander, they're going so wide with understeer. I just can't get the front in, uh, the, the front end kind of nailed in really on that corner for some reason, whereas, like, you know, on the S section and in sector one, the car's feeling pretty uh, pretty grippy, so I don't know what that's all about. We're going to have to try and maybe dial in this, uh, this setup a tiny bit, maybe with some brake bias and differential, but we're in uh, P15 then, so we just about make it through, actually. I got very lucky that I made it through uh, just at the end there in Q1. I was sweating a little bit that I was going to get knocked out just at the end, but thankfully you do make it in, but we're going to hit some issues straight away at the start of Q2. All right, get ready to jump out if you get too hot in there. There's a problem with the cooling system, and it's going to take us a few minutes to correct it. 
So a massive cooling system fault. So we have to sit in the garage now for about uh, seven minutes near enough. And so seven minutes in Q2 is quite a lot because that only leaves us eight minutes then uh, for the rest of the session. And like I said, there might be some rain coming. It's definitely going towards more overcast conditions now. And if there's a tiny bit of rain maybe coming down whilst I make my first and only flying lap then in this session, I might be a little bit screwed because we fast forward through. Everyone's setting lap times right now. I'm still sat in the garage with cooling system issues. And it's a little bit worrying, you know, it's a pattern now. We've had, I think, is that our second failure in the middle of qualifying uh, on the car? So I really don't need that to happen it's somewhere like Brazil or Abu Dhabi at the end of the season where it might be crucial to qualify, of course, especially if we have any kind of engine penalty as well. Uh, but nonetheless, we make it out then. And you can see, actually, uh, if you're eagle-eyed enough, we're on the set of soft tyres. So we are going to try and qualify on the middle tyre compound. So not only was I under pressure anyway by having that cooling system fall, I now am putting pressure on myself to qualify for fast enough on soft tyres, slower tyres than everyone else is using, because if we do make it into Q3 here, this will open up a fantastic and simple one-stop for us at Suzuka, which will be the better strategy. We come across a line where P9, very, very close stuff there. Now I've got to pray that I get through, and I do thankfully make it through by the skin of my teeth. There you can see Raikkonen is out of Q2 then, and he's so close to me time-wise there. Look at that. The gaps are pretty much nothing, and so Raikkonen gets very unlucky, and so I call for my teammate. Great success for us. We're going to be in the Top, top 10 and a free choice of tar. Obviously, Raikkonen now effectively does get a free choice anyway, being outside the top 10, so he could still do some good work in the race. We've seen Van Dorn, remember, in uh, Season 2, wasn't it? They won the, uh, the Japanese Grand Prix from P11 in Season 2, so you know, not all hope is lost for Raikkonen there, but for me, doubly good that I'm going to be able to go into the top 10 now, uh, and know that I'm going to start on soft tyres for tomorrow's race. So now we strap back on the super soft set, but now if you look close enough on the halo there, you'll be able to see some rain is coming down. We literally, as soon as I loaded into Q three session in the garage. I immediately just double clicked, go to track. Didn't even bother to look at the setup or the tyres or anything. I knew it was going to be all auto done for me and we'll have the correct kind of setup and fuel on the car. Just had to go out straight away because literally I needed to not waste any time because the rain is literally coming down as we speak. And so as we go on through this session, it's just going to get wetter and wetter. And so the grip is going to go away. I believe there's maybe one or two cars already ahead of me that are going to set lap times before me. So we might not have the best conditions on circuit, even though I literally, like I said, click go to track straight away because you can see Pierre Gasly crossed the line for the fastest uh, lap of the session so far. So even though I went as fast as I could, the computer AI went faster than me even out the garage, unfortunately. But at the moment, though, it's actually uh, felt like a pretty good lap time, actually. You know, the weather hasn't played too much of an effect on the track so far. Not felt a total lap of grip. I will admit, though, I went a little bit easy in the brake zone here in the chicane because I was very uh, very worried about a uh, uh, lockup and going wide with the damp patches on the circuit. But we go across the line for what was provisional P2 there. We go through the session and the rain is now officially coming down properly. We're going to go out anyway just to maybe see if there's a slight chance. By the time we go out, uh, we're down to P4 there behind Fernando Alonso. It's still ahead of Ricardo though, so that's good. But you can see it is raining even harder now. You can see that a little bit more on the chassis. And you're about to see as we go through to the start of the lap, really just a lack of grip. Uh, especially into turn one, just no grip at all. And so it's not going to be a better lap time. You know, we bought that lap, you can clearly see. And so we do end up in what is actually going to be then P5 in the end with Max Verstappen getting pole position then ahead of Carlos Sainz, Hulkenberg and Alonso. So Verstappen does a mega job. I don't know that that's another glitch time. Unless he set that time at the very beginning of the session, but that's impossible because Hulkenberg went fastest and then I went second, unless he was the one that bumped me down to P4. Uh, either way, a ridiculous time for Verstappen, but nonetheless, he's, he's, he's on pole. The two Renaults looking good. McLaren actually looking good there as well because both, uh, both of them right up there. Van Dorn just behind Ricardo, so we might have a very tough fight on our hands, not just with the Renault and Red Bull, but also the McLarens coming into it. And remember, our teammate is going to be way behind us in uh, you know P12 or P13, is it? Our on soft tyres as well. So we're going to have to really hope this one stop does work out for us to jump some of these guys who will have to do a two stop basically if they start on super soft. So that's our kind of hope. So we've done the clever strategic work here in qualifying Q2. Now we hope it pays dividends in the race tomorrow. Let's go to Sunday. And a very warm welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix. An event that has decided a driver's championship 11 times over the years and has hosted some very memorable races as well. Who can forget Kimi Raikkonen's win from 17th on the grid in 2005 or Kamui Kobayashi's incredible drive to a podium in 2012. A lap of this historic racetrack covers 3.6 miles and it's the only time during the season that we race on a figure of eight racetrack. 
The drivers can expect some intense G-forces through the 18 corners on offer here as they experience some of the highest average apex speeds on the Formula One calendar. And keep an eye out for overtakes going into the final chicane. A warm welcome to Anthony Davidson, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Let's talk briefly about Kimi Raikkonen. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. We're almost ready to go then, and this is what the starting grid looks like for today's race. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he starts from pole position. A very happy Carlos Sainz will start second. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Hülkenberg, the engineer, Stoffel van Dorn, and Gasly, Leclerc, Hartling, Raikkonen, and Valtteri Bottas. They've taken a grid penalty. Magnussen, Alonso, Lewis Hamilton, and Perez, Ricardo, Ericsson, Esteban Ocon, and Lance Stroll, Sirotkin, and Roman Grosjean starts from the back of the grid. And now it's time to head down to the track. All right, so bright and sunny skies here at Suzuka for an all-clear Japanese Grand Prix here today on Sunday. Thankfully for us, because uh, I think we would have been a lot worse in the rain. It's going to get a little bit cloudy, though, towards the end, so you never know with this game. There might be a surprise sprinkle of rain right at the end. You can never really tell, but you can see here now the default strategy for us is going to be that one stop, soft to mediums, and that has proven to be the much better strategy, actually. And only this is the first time now in this game so far I've managed to actually pull off the one stop, probably, in terms of qualifying on that soft tyre. Usually have had to always use the super softs to get through into Q3. So looking forward to what we can do. It might be a bit of a slow start compared to others on supers, but we have to try and bite the bullet and just go for it later on in the race. So here we go then to five red lights to the Japanese Grand Prix, and we're underway. It's a good start, uh, amazing start from Holkenberg, and actually that's more of just the fact it's a horrendous one for me as we really bog down on the soft, slower tyre. Vandal around my outside there. We try to maybe have a look down the inside into turn one. Not going to work out. Instead, we're actually busy squeezing Pierre Gasly and Gasly getting really aggressive with me and we just about managed to pull it through ahead of him but he's actually still tried his best to try and dampen my spirits there in the S section and try and get that P5 off me but we've remained in P5 then uh, Van Dorn in P4 and I believe it's actually Carlos Sainz who jumped the staff and into turn one in the lead of this Grand Prix then so stellar start then from the Spaniard from second place on the grid obviously the inside line for that so that's probably the better run into turn one so as we move on now through the opening stages of this race now we're going to be hounded by Pierre Gasly once again on the back straight towards 130R on this opening lap then Gasly pulls out to the right it's going to be a very nice shot but a bit of a nerve-wracking time as we go side by side through 130R and once again me and Gasly go toe-to-toe -to -toe at Suzuka something's never changing look at that three wide between Holkenberg Verstappen and Van Dorn fantastic work Holkenberg squeezed off the circuit there he's very slow can we have a pop now to into turn Turn one, it's a big old train now. Renault, Ferrari, Toro Rosso, Sauber, another Toro Rosso. And you've got the Ferrari Vrijken in the background as well as Gasly's still trying to make a move down the inside. And we can't actually get the speed in a straight line to catch up to Hulkenberg despite being pushed off there. And uh, a major moment though in that race, that was three wide. It looked like maybe Van Dorn, uh, Verstappen maybe got dive bombed by Hulkenberg on the outside. Then Van Dorn decided to dive bomb him subsequently on the inside there because uh, it looked like they were trying to make it three wide in the second part of that chicane, which is just not going to work really ever. So very intriguing stuff here. So it means now that it is uh, Carlos Sainz in the lead, Van Dorn second, Verstappen third, Hulkenberg fourth, and it might just be Gasly in fifth place now because look at the straight line speed that Toro Rosso Honda has. Obviously, their home Grand Prix, technically, the engine supply, I mean, not the team, but Honda's home race. Of course, it's the Honda Japanese Grand Prix. And so, oh, my God, Gasly, I was about to say, doing a great job there. But then he very rudely, uh, well, locks up, but that wasn't his fault. He locked up, but his lock-up inadvertently made me lock up and nearly lose my front wing on the back end there. So he's very lucky for my sake. Otherwise, I would have had some very stern words with him after this Grand Prix. Now we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Leclerc and just about defend him. You can see how slow the soft tyres are, unfortunately, at this stage of the race compared to those super soft tyres. But remember, as the super softs wear out, my soft tyres will basically get faster relative to the super softs. So just a, it's a patience game here at the moment, but it's one that I'm losing at the moment because these guys are so much faster. Leclerc is going to be waltzing past me. I'm going to try and stick behind them to maybe re-overtake him on the next lap then uh, because I can't really do too much. I couldn't defend at all into that opening uh, as a corner and sector, really. So just going to have to try and stick behind them and then kind of make the move in uh, sector three. We've got some good pace in sector one. 
and the first half of sector two, but then we lose a bit of time as we go through spoon curves. And then on the back straight, just a case of we are close enough, we can get the slipstream, which we are getting now. And we're going to tactically lift off into 130R to really get up behind him. Now, make the move on the inside. Very aggressive break zone here. As late as we dare, Leclerc, though, very late on the brakes as well. It's a fantastic scrap there. And fair play, gave me a real good fight there. But uh, ultimately, we have the inside line. And we're back up the order into P6. Now we go defensive. We're going to try and break the toe on the slipstream there to the inside. And actually going to aid Raikkonen now and give him a bit of a slipstream there on the racing line. He's going to pull around the outside of Leclerc. And so he'll be up into P7. So P6 and P7 for both us Ferrari cars. Both on the soft tyres. Everyone ahead of us is on super soft tyres. So essentially we will be in a lead and net one and two once everyone makes their first pit stop. But before they do that, Verstappen now attacking and trying to re-overtake Van Dorn for what was second place in the Grand Prix earlier for him. But Van Dorn squeezes him wide. It's going to be a fantastic move if uh, Verstappen can pull that off on the outside of turn one. Doesn't work out though, but look at that mega train now. Van Dorn, Verstappen, Gasly. But Hulkenberg now has already pit for his, uh, his first pit stop then. And Verstappen comes through down the inside of 130R to finally make that pass on Van Dorn and so he can now try and chase after Sainz but uh, to be honest with all the fighting these guys have had Carlos Sainz is in a world of his own so he might be very comfortable in this Grand Prix from even us for the race victory because that's how far he is but we're now rapidly closing up to Van Dorn through 130 on lap 9 so getting pretty close to the pit stop phase maybe for some of these guys we go down the inside it's a very tricky move to make on the inside they're so close to the curbing so close to Van Dorn's car Gasly's in though we've got the other Renault of Sainz is in Verstappen in Van Dorn surprisingly stays out but look at that lovely move there from Kimi to get ahead of Van Dorn and he has a go at me down the inside but he goes way too deep there I saw that coming I could tell he was gonna if he tried the move he was gonna go wide 100% okay maybe not 100 maybe 99.999 he would have gone wide there so I covered that off broke early on purpose went down the inside lovely little switch move there but eventually we're going to basically almost let Raikkonen through at this stage because I'm going to come in for, the, uh, for a pit stop now on lap 10 so it's a little bit early maybe because Van Dorn's still going on super soft so Van Dorn might well be going to medium tyres I think the likes of Holcomb over Staffen and Sainz might be trying the softs or maybe they might try the mediums I don't know really at this point because they have got a lot longer than I thought they would but we're going to come in so there was no point really putting up much of a fight against Raikkonen at that last part of the lap because I would have just held both of us up there so I just let him buy and went down to lower ERS modes and fuel modes to save fuel and save ERS down the main straight and uh, also in the pit lane then as we uh, make our way onto the medium tyres I want to see does Van Dorn also go on mediums I could not tell there I, I want to say maybe medium tyres but I can't be 100% sure it's interesting to see if Verstappen and Sainz did because like I said you know they pit really late uh, one person who's definitely not on mediums was Holcomo there who overtook Magnussen into turn one eventually though as we go through the Grand Prix then lap 13 and so three laps later Raikkonen comes out and he's ahead of me now so despite being on these tyres for three laps then those softs were still faster for Raikkonen than my fresher medium tyres and so Raikkonen stays ahead of me and extends the gap a tad so that's a little bit unfortunate but I have confidence that you know I can bring it back because this tyre is a very consistent tyre it may not be the best tyre in the world around Suzuka but it's very consistent so I feel confident I can try and close back the gap but at the moment it is Carlos Sainz on mediums Verstappen also on medium tyres the only man on softs then is Hulkenberg in P3 so once again like Russia Hulkenberg is doing a two stop when everyone else is doing a one stop uh, and then it's obviously going to be uh, Raikkonen and then myself chasing after this entire pack so it's all about if uh, well firstly Hulkenberg has the pace to maybe do something about his own race and then if myself and Kimi can catch up to the Red Bull car obviously the one we're fighting in the Drivers' Championship but here goes Hulkenberg now down the inside of 130R it's so close Bit of contact made, surprised that maybe Verstappen didn't push Hulkenberg a little bit off there, but uh, he lives to fight another day. Hulkenberg does through the last corner, then maybe can try and get a nice slingshot now onto the main straight. He has DRS available, ERS going on overtake mode, rich mix alto, I assume. And so the German v the Dutchman, soft tyre v medium. Roll Renault v Red Bull and he is round the outside it's a lovely move in the end and he's up into P2 to make it a 1-2 for Renault but it's going to be very short lived of course because he's going to come in for that second pit stop then so once again you know Hulkenberg he's in a championship fight and now twice in a row he's done a two stop when everyone and their mothers are doing a one stop it just he's definitely throwing away 
his title chances. You know, he could be in a much stronger position if he wasn't pulling these uh, kind of situations off. And it's not even his team, it's his side of the garage because Science is out there doing the one stop. Probably going to go on to win this Grand Prix, I would say. Um, so very peculiar kind of strategy for him. And meanwhile for us, later on that same lap that Hulkenberg's made his pit stop on, we are here now into Spoon Curves, catching Raikkonen. We've been keeping him honest actually now for a fair few laps now within one, about, uh, one second or so. And we're both in tandem been catching Verstappen this entire time. Carlos Sainz though so uh, much ahead in first place so I don't think we'll be catching him for first place anytime soon neither will Raikkonen and Verstappen though because also they are going to be you know, fighting over P2 and that's maybe the maximum we can hope for today is now Raikkonen goes for a move on the outside there forces Verstappen's hand to go deep and Kimi actually look at that makes the move on the outside there gets squeezed off the circuit though and loses a lot of time and so here we come now lap 18 now less than 9 laps to go in this Grand Prix Raikkonen pulls to the left hand side Verstappen slow coming make a move we're on the left we're going to go to the inside Verstappen's wide we just about managed to thread the car through and we make a double pass on him then and it's a Ferrari 2-3 now from what was a 3-4 fantastic teamwork kind of you know at the same time doing the moves catching Verstappen kind of unawares there and so in a split second we are back in a comfortable place for the championship because of course Raikkonen if he does finish ahead of us he was a fair amount uh, behind us in the championship anyway so uh, I need to really worry about Hulkenberg and Verstappen at this stage of the season right now unless Raikkonen does some miracle and goes off and wins the Grand Prix but that's not going to happen because at the moment now on to lap uh, 19 we're pushing very hard so much so you can see I'm going to negative fuel and I'm really flirting now with the ERS if we go any more we might be into some low, low territory for the battery deployment here. But at the moment, I'm just going to try and focus on overtaking Raikkonen. And then I'll leave future Arav to kind of worry about the fuel saving and kind of uh, do the fuel saving after we've done the move. Because if we don't burn the fuel now, we won't even make the pass. So I'd rather make the pass and try and defend with low fuel than not even make the pass at all. So here we go now. Moving on to lap 20 then. Seven laps to go in this Grand Prix. Gaining and gaining. And we're going to pull to the left-hand side. Racing line is the best place to overtake it at this circuit in turn one. And we make a fairly easy easy move then with the power of rich mix and overtake mode of ERS and now we immediately uh, set it all the way down to lean mixture and none and we are going to lift and coast and short shift the most we can to try and save this fuel that desperately because I burned a lot of fuel that is not an easy amount of fuel to get back in a Grand Prix when you're on standard mixture so we need to go to the lean and none to also save the battery power for the main straight so, you know the back straight towards 130 are we going to need hot lap mode and overtake mode but right now good moves there we're up into second place you can see in the minimap though, Sainz nowhere near us. So pretty much this is the highest we can uh, hope for in this Grand Prix. But it's fair play to Sainz. He's done a fantastic job this race after overtaking Verstappen in the beginning of the Grand Prix. He's controlled it so, so well. And in the meantime, Raikkonen's going to try his best to overtake me. But we're going to do some good defensive work in 130R. It, despite us being in standing mixture, we're using overtake mode. And just, you know, the racing line being a little bit tricky uh, with Raikkonen. Placing the car exactly where we need it to, to defend uh, correctly from him. And we're going to remain in P2 for now. But for how much longer? can we keep up this charade now because uh, sooner or later Raikkonen's maybe going to have a good run enough for him to actually make the move and make it stick but for now again we go defensive to the inside Raikkonen on the outside there we're going to keep it on the inside line he just doesn't have the momentum neither the kind of balls to <laughs> pull it around the outside for the entire move and so we are going to remain in P2 as we move on now later into lap 21. A little bit slow off the a little bit slow off the hairpin as we make a mistake on the traction there and lose the back end. And so Raikkonen's going to have a little look, but he's not going to make the same lunge Vettel made at the real-life Japanese Grand Prix. Not going to make that mistake. And so we're going to remain ahead as we go wide. We've got the safety car has been deployed. The full safety car there. And so once again, the safety car could just save our bacon. We slap that car all the way down to none and Lee Mixture and we're now going to be fine for fuel and ERS towards the end of this race although it will be a sprint race now to the end and you know how good the AI are on the start of the safety car period so it's kind of a, a double-edged sword I'm going to save fuel, save ERS but Raikkonen and Verstappen may have a, a very good chance of overtaking me on the restart here so actually I don't think it saved us it might actually just ruin our second place here for a second so let's just wait and see as we go to the restart then I don't actually know why this safety car got called out I looked through the race director after this race and I don't even know what the incident was so I, I have no explanation there so there we go but we're going to move through now second place green flags go 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 right, science we were 
close to him on the restart there. We did heat up our tyres a fair bit. You saw in the heads-up display, my tyres were all green, but despite that, Sainz gets a brilliant exit, and Raikkonen also does. He's going to be right up our gearbox for the now. We stay put in P2, but into Turn 1, you can see there, I do not have the grip against Carlos Sainz. That car working beautifully there for the Spaniard, and so I think Sainz is still going to be remaining in P1, and instead, we're going to be back to fighting for P2, and this time, I think, strangely, now I'm in a worse position than I was earlier, because not only have I lost some tyre temperatures, Raikkonen's gained some ERS maybe, because he's coming at a rate of knots now, and he's looking a lot faster than he did before, he's on the inside, remember no DRS here on the uh, third last lap of the Grand Prix, just pure slipstream and power, we're going to defend though very aggressively on the kerb there, little bit of a corner cut, we rode the kerb very much like a skateboard on a half pipe there, but uh, we are back up into P2, but Raikkonen, he's going to get a good enough exit on the last corner, it won't matter to be honest, Karma's going to come back for him, because here he comes now on the right hand side, we've been piss poor on that last turn for pretty much my entire F1 career mode uh, on F1 2018 and F1 2017 remember on the last game and so Raikkonen uses that to his advantage gets into second place and I don't have much to defend with my tyres are now at a stage where I can't really push them too much and they're falling away a tad I am able to stay put in sector one but like I said earlier I start to lose time as soon as we climb up this hill uh, you know, in the second half of Sector 2 and then the entirety of Sector 3, especially through spoon curves, this car, uh, you know, entire weekend, I've just not had a very pointy front end and so we are losing hand over fist then to Raikkonen on the back straight despite being in overtake mode and rich mode and so as we move on towards the, the last lap of the Grand Prix, that 27 instead I may be looking behind me at Verstappen rather than ahead at Raikkonen so Kimi, I think he's got this one so I'm not going to say fair play because I feel like I do deserve that second place. He's got, he's purely got that off the restart of the safety car, me being slower. But, you know, also at the same time, he's done it, so I can't complain too much. But Verstappen now is going to try and move to the inside. And Gasly's going to come through as well to make it a very awkward three-wide moment there. Look at that. Gasly tried his best to ruin that move and go around the outside for the double overtake on myself and Max, but it didn't work out. So I nearly had a heart attack at the end of that race. We nearly lost it all. We nearly went from P3 down to P5. Thankfully not so. We remain in P3 onto the last straight, then through one the OTR. Don't need to worry about Verstappen. We've got this right on speed now. He's uh, kind of, we pulled away from him far too much in that last lap there. And instead, we Brent Hartley that hounds him for that position in P4. So we're going to come through now. Carlo Sainz wins the Japanese Grand Prix. Fair play to him. Dominant all weekend. Raikkonen in P2. And for ourselves, the podium complete for P3. Good job. You did really well. Super driving. Renault have pulled off a sublime performance to secure the top step of the podium today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? Well, they played the safety car to absolute perfection. There are so many factors to worry about once the race is neutralised. Do you pit for fresh rubber? Do you have the space behind you? How much fuel can you save? If you answer all of those questions correctly, you'll have a good chance. And that's exactly what happened today. Here come today's winning drivers, and what a race it was. This is a team that knows success very well in F1, and they're just itching for even more. Congratulations to the Renault team for their excellent win today. So in the end, so in the end, it's going to be P3. Annoyed to be beaten by Raikkonen at the end like that because uh, you know we fought so hard. You know there was a, a lot, a very large chunk of that race. You guys didn't even see that I cut out because literally it was me sweating my ass off trying to catch up to Raikkonen and also keep him honest. Obviously both caught up to Verstappen there to finally make the move on uh, what was like lap 20. You know the entire second stint you guys didn't even see because nothing was happening about for me pushing so hard. So it was unfortunate to end like that after so much pushing and sweating like that in the race, but. Nonetheless, we come out on top in the Drivers' Championship still. We extend some points to Verstappen, actually, as Hulkenberg as well. Uh, Kimi, the only kind of real winner there in that fight by catching up uh, you know, uh, somewhat to us in the point standings. But constructors-wise, we are now pulling away a little bit from Red Bull. So all things considered, it's actually a quite successful weekend in Japan, despite being beaten by Carlos Sainz there. So the next couple of episodes are now going to be very interesting. You know, If Renault and McLaren keep this update pace up, and Red Bull don't, and we don't as well, because we're saving points now for the adaption for next year's regulations. 
it's going to be a very close and tense ending to the season, you know, because you're going to have the two, three real championship rivals not scoring high points. And so it, the gains and losses are going to be so close. And you might have some surprise late runners up in the championship. So it's going to be very intriguing. But before we end up the episode, then we're going to finally purchase a few last little upgrades. We actually do the level three updates here because they cost the most in theory at their full price. So they are the best ones to adapt at half price, if you know what I mean, at this stage of adaptability. So that's why I'm doing it that way, kind of backwards to, to front there in terms of the actual tree direction. So guys, that has been the Japanese Grand Prix. If you guys did enjoy the episode, smash the like button. Let me know your thought in the comments below. If you're around to subscribe for weekly formal content, I've been ever. I'm trusting you today. Goodbye.